security is all about stopping intruders, trespassers, thieves at the property line. Why does, why does security have to start at the house or at the office building? Why, why shouldn't it start at my property line? Why can't I keep people out there? And we've tried to do this for you know, thousands of years with, with first off fences, but fences can Fences are usually easily defeated by either climbing over them or if the fence is too tall to climb over, they'll kick in a wooden fence or they'll cut through a chain link fence. So that doesn't keep people out. Walls will prevent that. I mean, short of crashing through with a car or a truck, walls will keep people out. But still, unless it's incredibly high, you know, you can climb over it. Um, to date... You know, the only real form of perimeter security would be to employ security guards and cameras and monitors. Now, we see a lot of automated systems today where if somebody triggers a motion detector on the property, it'll cut floodlights on, it'll even turn on a camera. But unless you can afford to pay security guards to be right there on the property all the time, there's somebody looking at that camera remotely, but then you're dealing with what's the response time of the police or security force or whatever. The best way we know of keeping people out, uh, of any kind of containing livestock keeping people out, is electric fences. I mean, electric fences have been used all over the world for the last 75 to 100 years. They've been effective at containing lives, all kinds of domestic livestock, from cattle and horses to wild deer and antelope. You know, we even use them to protect crops from nuisance animals of pests of all animal pests of all types, including elephants and rhinos in Africa. Most of us that have lived in the country or out in the provinces have had experience with electric fences of one type or another. You jump over it, or you very carefully crawl under the hot wire to get through the fence. Now, this isn't much of a security device because it's easy enough to climb through the wires or crawl under them. But what if you uh, put the wires close enough together that people couldn't climb through them and made the fence up high enough that they couldn't climb over it? Well, you know, electric fences work great because, number one, people are just afraid of electricity. And number two, if you touch it, you get a heck of a jolt that actually punches you backwards. But, uh, you know, it's still easy to defeat an electric fence. You can cut it. That's, well, that's it right there. You cut the wire, and you can go right through it. Uh, also, if you're heavily insulated, if you're wearing rubber shoes, heavy rubber gloves, you can climb right up, climb right through an electric fence. You can pull the wires apart. So the challenge for security for, for decades, has, for 100 years that electric fences have been around, is how could I put up an electric fence and yet know if somebody is violating it? And that would give me a truly secure system because if I knew when somebody's violating it, then if I trigger my floodlights, my cameras, whatever, first off, the electric fence keeps, off all, keeps out almost everybody because of that shock and because of that fear factor. 
But if I do have somebody go through it, then I know I have a real violator. Oh, I know they make kinds of things for chain link fences like that. I mean, these motion detectors that mount on the fence panel and whether they use electricity and moving brass balls inside the monitor or if they're using laser beams or LEDs. The bottom line is if the fence shakes, it triggers an alarm. That means if an animal runs into the fence, it triggers the, I mean, branches hit the fence, it triggers. These are motion detectors and everyone I've seen, and I just got back from the International Security Conference, the ACES Conference in Orlando, everyone I saw was extremely sensitive. Now, here's the first thing that strikes me is on a windy day, what happens on a chain link fence? The wind makes the fence vibrate. So what do they do about that? Well, they, they desensitize the fence in software. The logic is that if all the fence sections are moving, then it's just the wind doing it. Some of them even use an anemometer to measure the wind and use that as part of their computer program. But tests have shown that on a windy day, if you climb up that chain link fence alongside the post, that uh, it's not going to trigger the fence. The, the computer is going to think that you're part of the wind motion. Um, if you do it carefully in just the right places, you can still cut through that fence on a windy day and get in. So that's not, that doesn't work effectively either. We keep coming back to the electric fence. If there was a way to monitor it, to know what's going on with that fence, that's going to keep people out, trespassers out. It's going to keep everything out. So we'll talk more about designing and building a perimeter security array in the next video. But for now, I want to talk about how we monitor an electrified fence. In 1978, patent a patent application was filed. In 1979, 1980, it was granted patent number 4,220,949. And here's... Here's a picture of the main circuit diagram. Here's how it works. It involves a neon tube. You see, an electric fence is not constantly energized. An electric fence throws a very high voltage pulse, as high as 25,000 volts, down the wire for 50 microseconds. That's 0 .00005 seconds. High voltage, low time. That's why when you grab an electric fence, you don't, your muscles don't freeze up. You don't jam on it and stand there until you fry. You grab an electric fence, you get the shock, and it bangs you away. It'll often knock you backwards. It's because that pulse hits you real hard, but for a real short period of time. Now, how do you measure such a short voltage pulse? So the invention was needed at this time. But he used a neon tube, and then, you, and then here, I'll, right here, you can see where the neon tube is. That's the circuit diagram for it. Use the neon tube to flash every time the voltage hit it. So right here next to the neon tube is this optically sensitive photoresistor. This resistor says, oh, look, there's, there's some light. There is some light. There is some light. The average pulse on electric fence is once a second. The rest of the circuit over here, you know, charges this capacitor and all, but what it does is it says, yes, there's voltage on the fence. Yes, there's voltage on the fence. And as long as that pulse keeps coming in on a regular basis, it says that the, the fence is working properly. Every electric fence monitor, every electric fence sensor in the world uses this patent except for the fence hawk. The problem with this particular patent is that it doesn't measure the actual voltage. It just says there's voltage there. If weeds grow up, if resistance builds up on the fence and the voltage drops from 10,000 to 3,000 to 300 volts, as long as that pulse is still coming on a regular basis, the sensor thinks the fence is okay. Second problem, electrical storms. The lightning bolt will throw the pulse rate off, which makes it trigger a default alarm. Quite often with this kind of sensor system, People will just turn it off in an electrical storm because it will generate false alarms. The fence hawk, because it measures the absolute voltage, because it does things completely differently, isn't subject to these false alarms. 
we're about out of time on this one, so join me on episode two, and we'll talk about how the fence lock works and why it's different. <laughs>